Would you believe it? It's good for everybody else. I'll tell you what, a lot of live streaming has been going on um, and probably going to be happening for a little bit longer. Now, um, I'm doing this video because I had a discussion with somebody about milestones and one of my live streams and then I thought, well actually, I didn't answer that question quite the way I would have preferred. So I thought I would do a dedicated video on milestones. That's why I'm talking about the topic today. Okay, now you will find the start time for this video down in the description for those of you who want to skip past all of my setup and are just checking the sound. Sound seems to be coming through fine. You will let me know if the sound is not any good or if the video is not coming through clearly. You should be able to see a moon crashing into some world. Uh, this is all about epic level uh, wizards, this image, right? How's it going, JetWow135? Hi, how's it going? Brick Boss is here. Hey, what's up? It's uh, me again. I'm the only one here. Well, no, you're not. There are other people in the room. Okay, now, if you haven't been part of my live streams before, normally what I do is I will present everything first and then open it up for questions and answers. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So even though I sign out at the end of this particular video, you'll hear me signing out. Don't run away. Stick around so you can have a chat with me, okay? Hi, Josh. How's it going? Hi, David. Uh... Now, let me just, give me a second while I just try to get that name right. Uh, gra, Grachus. Is it Grachus? Chus, Chus. I think it's Grachus. If I get, if I get it wrong, you'll let me know. Hi, Brandon. How's it going? Okay, so, back to OBS. And uh, it's time for me to line myself up and do this video, right? Here we go. It's Milestones. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Willer, and today, pardon me guys, <clears throat> I'm going to start again. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Willer, and today I'm going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and not necessarily just about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. The title for today is not Epic Level Wizards, absolutely not. It's got nothing to do with that whatsoever. Instead, I'm doing this video because I had a discussion with somebody in a live chat and I thought I needed to answer the question correctly and I had a few other things I needed to add. So, the title for today is Dungeons and Dragons Milestones Are Lazy. So we're going to answer that question and we're going to talk about milestones because I know a few people want to talk about milestones. It seems to be a very popular way of running the game now. Now milestones are when a player's character level, level adjustment or advancement is quickly becoming like, that's how it's adjusted. You don't calculate XP, you just shift them at a particular point. It is becoming uh, really popular amongst dungeon masters, but not popular enough that um, more than 10% of people who run games are using it. It is really popular amongst the Wizards of the Coast design team, who actually prefer this method. Now, milestones means that levels are gained after a goal has been completed of some kind, and that can take any form whatsoever. So here's the question. Is it lazy to use milestones? My answer to you is, and it is just my opinion, yes, it absolutely is. Milestones are definitely a lazy way of running the game. So you should use it, absolutely, as much as you possibly can. Absolutely use that particular method. So here are some positive reasons why I think you should use those milestones. One, it is easier for you as the Dungeon Master to manage. There's no experience points to calculate for the Dungeon Master, and that takes up a small amount of your time, but every little bit of time that you take away from designing and creating characters and maps and locations and magic items and other things, you're going to spend your time calculating experience points? I don't know. doesn't seem like a useful way of your time to me. Next, Character level advancement is not just about killing monsters. You can advance the story and your characters by just dealing with a trap or exploring a location, finding something, having a social encounter. So having a discussion which results in you moving the story forward in some way. All of these things can be tied into milestoning. 
and you don't have to worry about figuring out how many experience points they should get for discussing something with the town guards and being able to get through the front gates. You don't have to worry about that now. It's gone. It's going to encourage players to focus on completing significant tasks and goals. That's the whole thing, right? Is try to move them through the story rather than get them stuck in one place. Teamwork is going to be rewarded rather than individual character achievements. Now, if you're using individual uh, experience points and awards, then you're rewarding individuals for achieving things. But if you do it with the milestone concept, it applies to everybody, right? So that means that the whole team benefits even if somebody else has done something. And that's the whole concept behind Dungeons & Dragons. Teamwork. It is even easier for players to manage and track and level adjustment. There's, there's nothing for them to calculate. They don't have to write anything on their character sheet whatsoever. It's very, very simple. And lastly, it's easier to control the pace of your adventure. If you're finding that it's difficult to control the pace of your adventure because you're not too sure when they should level up or what sort of challenge you should have at this particular point, you can just set it in motion that, okay, I know once I get to here, they're going to level up one level and they should be able to deal with the encounters that I have dealt with or planned out for this part of the adventure. Or you could decide, well, actually, I need them to level up two levels or three levels to be able to deal with the next part of the story. So there's going to be a time frame that will pass and they will just level up. You don't even have to worry about these sorts of things. Half the time people worry about when people should level up based on the concept that it's a reward, which it certainly is, it is certainly a way of rewarding your players, milestoning and experience points. But you generate an awful lot of hassle for yourself by doing things a particular way just because somebody said you should do it that way. Okay, there are some, there are some negatives to using milestones. So let's talk about them now. Okay, so there are no individual rewards for players. So if there's a particular individual in the group who's doing a really good job of moving the story on and making things happen, you really want them to be able to be rewarded for that, right? And you can't really do that with milestones. You have to use a different system. And there's plenty of different systems to use. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It does also mean that something like a small side quest doesn't have the same impact. It's not quite as important because the overarching story is more important. So that might downplay the importance of going and doing a smaller task within your adventure that might be more tailored towards an individual, uh, an individual character. Players constantly asking when they are going to level up their character because they don't have a way of tracking when you level up. Now, there is a way around that. If you explain to your players your concept and way of leveling up with milestones, if you say, this is how I do it, I'm looking for you to achieve these sorts of things to level up, then that shouldn't be an issue. But I do know that players do tend to uh, badger a dungeon master if you're using milestones like, when are we leveling up? Shouldn't we be leveling up every session or every two sessions or three sessions? Didn't we just defeat something that, you know, so that can cause a bit of an issue. It's one of the cons to using milestones. It's hard to figure out when characters will level up. Really? Is it actually harder to figure out when a character should level up when you use milestones? I don't know that it is. I, I, I question that. And the reason that I question it is because we got given information on how to figure out when to um, to actually use a milestone. There are this guidance in the Dungeon Master's Guide in that book on page 261. And there are some a couple of different things you can look at with regard to when you should award a milestone. So if a character discovers a hidden location, that would be a good time to particularly if it's an important hidden location, then certainly award a milestone. That could be a good place to do it. It might be for gaining important information. Now, you, you'll notice that I'm talking about things that are unrelated to killing monsters and combat. It might be because they found out uh, the, the treasure map that will lead them to the final location where the big uh, baddie is, where there's a, a big treasure hoard and a dragon. 
uh, completing a series of goals. So it might not be just one thing, it might be a series of different things that they have to achieve, tasks or goals, needed to progress the story or adventure and achieve the final goal. So that's another way of doing it if you wanted to. Or we could go with reaching an important location or destination. So it might be that your adventure is more about travel and so therefore reaching an important location and you might spread out your adventure, you've got point A, point B, point C, point D, point, point um, F, F, E, whatever, and then that is how you're going to work out your progression with regard to milestones. All of this is actually not that difficult to do. Now I know if you are going to say, look, Fred, actually what you're talking about still requires me to figure this stuff out. Well, let's get really lazy, shall we? I can make it even easier for you. And that is, um, why not make it super easy? When do you actually need to worry about milestones and level advancement? Well, just make it up, okay? Literally, just make it up. It can be pretty arbitrary. It doesn't necessarily have to be tied down to achieving a certain thing. Now I know what people are going to say, like, that just take, that demeans Dungeons and Dragons. Look, you can level your characters up every three game sessions. You could level up every two game sessions. If you want to really get things going because you never get a chance to play often, if you're only playing, like, once every fortnight or once a month, and you don't play every week, then why not level them up after every session? Try something new rather than trying to do exactly the same thing you've always done. Make your life easier and use milestones and ditch the calculator. Ditch that calculator. Now I want to make it clear to you that I have calculated and used experience points. That's what I was taught. I was taught that was the correct way to do it and that there was no other way that was really suitable and everything else was the wrong way. Then I moved from, I would calculate experience points for individuals, which is really complicated, takes a lot of time. Um, and then I would calculate experience points for whoever was at the table and I would assign it to what was essentially an, a non-existent person. So whoever came to the table next week, that's how many experience points they might have. It had nothing to do with um, the fact that they might have attended the session before that. I just used it as a way of guiding roughly the progression of the group as they were playing. But milestones make a lot of sense. You'll notice in a lot of the pre-printed adventures nowadays that they include guidance with regard to milestones and I recommend that you use them. And if you haven't heard of the Lazy Dungeon Master, Sly Flourish, he has a couple of books on the topic, I suggest going and checking them out. Now if you have any questions, if you have any feedback that you would like to give me, this is the time to do it. I have lots of videos for players and Dungeon Masters in particular that will cover a vast number of different topics and you're welcome to go and check them out. You might find something that's useful. I just recently did a video called Being a Lazy Dungeon Master and I would uh, recommend if you haven't seen that video going and finding out what it's like because I did have a discussion about sort of the the mentality and attitude behind that, you might find that useful. I don't do Patreon, but I'm certainly working towards that. I do have affiliate links down in the description if you want to support my channel, um, and uh, you can go and buy stuff there if you want to. Now, please share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And if you're really lucky, YouTube might actually notify you. Um, so make sure you, you check your YouTube settings and then just pray after that, because there's nothing more we can do. Now, that's it. And till next time, keep rolling those 20s. I'm not gone, but I do need to just uh, rearrange myself a little bit because um, I'm not quite in the camera. And this time I'm going to make sure I can see. So I brought my glasses. I actually found them. And once I've lined myself up, now you'll notice that the sound will sound a little bit different because I need to position myself so the camera can see me, which means I'm not standing right over the microphone like I was before. Um, and 
if that's sort of an issue for you, I do apologise. I am working on those sorts of things. Actually, I had a discussion with my brother today about it. Um, we've got some new good news on that uh, front. Okay, so let's get to the live chat. There seems to be a lot of activity in here. Holy Toledo. Let's make sure we say hi to everybody. Um, I've already said hi to Jetwell and BrickBoss101 and Josh is here and David's here. Um, Grachos, Grachos, Chos. I, I, look, if I've got your name butchered, I do a... Grachos, Grachos. Okay, Grachos. I think I got it. Thank you very much. I appreciate your understanding. The other day I had so much trouble pronouncing a particular name. And I think it came out as um, Sister Gali. Um, and it should have been, uh, <laughs> it should have been Gal. And I just could not get it to come out. Sometimes when I'm doing these live streams, I'm all tongues, which you might have already noticed. Um, Durgo, is it Durgo? Is this just a live recording? It is a live recording. I am. I often do my videos live, rather than uh, you just watch a video and then communicate with me via comments. Uh, my channel is all about community, so you will find that a lot of my live streams get cut down uh, so that they are released as an edited version. But uh, because I am about a community and because I enjoy the live stream aspect to YouTube more than anything else, which is why I do it. Uh, this is where I want to answer questions and talk to people about stuff rather than down in the comments. Because let, let's get real, when you go to a channel, quite often as the channel gets bigger and bigger, you can write a comment and nobody responds to you whatsoever. Okay, I don't like that idea. So I don't, I don't operate that way. Um, Grakos, he will answer questions after his talking that's exactly right now it doesn't matter whether it's for a player or a dungeon master it doesn't mean it doesn't even have to be about this topic I will talk to you about whatever you want to talk about uh, I think the only thing I will not talk to you about is politics religion and music oh well, actually music we'll go with music I can talk with talk about music not a problem <laughs> uh, no he's currently live that's right Josh absolutely uh, yes, I, I, I do occasionally stumble, um, but I try to make sure my notes are accurate. So for those of you who are wondering what that might look like, this is my notebook. Two pages, um, which took me about just under 15 minutes of actual talking to get out. So, hooray! Uh, what's that, Josh? Uh, you give them extra candy. There, well, it's all about giving you extra candy. I like candy. I like sugar. I, I shouldn't like sugar, but I do. I just can't have it. And, yeah, it's one of those things. Anyway, let's just make sure I don't skip past anything. Um, drives up in a van with no windows. Free candy and Wi-Fi kiddos. Ooh, that sounds really bad. Let's not stay away from that topic. Um... <laughs> About to start playing a new game group. Dem says he's using XP and awarding players individual for RP, kills, etc. I don't see it going well. It's one of the reasons why I stopped using it. Because it, it used to cause dissension with, amongst the players. There were some players who were fine with this and other players who weren't. And when players didn't attend... And they might have a completely legitimate, you know, a legitimate reason. There was a good reason why they couldn't show up, and they didn't get awarded experience points. And in the end, I just, I just felt like it was causing too many problems. As a lot of you know, I don't give um, two hoots about game rules really, and I run a channel on game rules. I don't give two hoots about uh, consistency within a story. I don't give two hoots about roleplay. The only thing I care about is the integrity of the game group. The idea that we all get along and we all keep coming back to play the game. And the only time that I don't want that to happen is when there's somebody in the game who is just so unpleasant to be with that I ask them to leave. Which has been very rare. I can't think of many times when that's happened. Usually there's been a natural way that it's developed. 
because I've communicated my intention to them when I play the game, they usually know, know what they're getting into and uh, if they don't like that, they disappear and I never see them again. Okay, Josh, um, players who bring awesome snacks uh, for the table deserve some extra X XP. Well, they don't have to get XP, you can give them something else, you know? I know, for example, in my home group, in terms of awarding somebody, rather than uh, worrying about the experience points, um, what would happen is that Simon, I'm going to use your name, Simon, because I thought it was brilliant, he would award people uh, inspiration points. So he, you would get to an inspiration point if you made him a cup of tea or a cup of coffee if he wanted um, coffee, which was very rare. Uh, if you brought him food, he would give you uh, inspiration. I know that you that sounds like you're bribing the dungeon master because it is, uh, but I still think it's a sensible way. It builds a good relationship between people um, because you're not we're not talking about um, a transaction and money. We're talking about a transaction and understanding that the dungeon master has done a lot of work and had to do quite a lot of preparation, and they are running the game and providing you with the entertainment that you can do something for them. So I actually think that's a good way of doing it. There are other ways, um, but I think inspiration is a good way as long as people use it. Uh, Fire Lord Singer. The book looks interesting. Look, honestly, uh, Mike has, has been talking about this sort of stuff for a long time. A lot of Dungeon Masters have. It's just that Sly Flourish has put it down into a couple of books and communicated this information. He does have, in fact, a YouTube channel called Sly Flourish. And I recommend you go and check that uh, channel out because although a lot of his content is quite long, it's really it's it's really as gold. It's really important stuff. If you're looking to develop yourself as a dungeon master, we're talking about he's he's on the cutting edge. I would say that Sly Flourish is absolutely on the cutting edge. Okay, um, how's it going, Darren? Okay, let's see, uh, Jetwell135, some people play that if you die, you get a character that is one level below the others. Yes, I know. Uh, but how do you get the players up to the same level as the others? Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story about Jetwell's um, discussion here is actually something that has come up in me, with me. I played with a group, the Dungeon Master had this rule that um, if your character died, and you couldn't bring it back to life through magical means that you had access to, then you had to make a new character. And that character had to be one level lower than the average of the entire group. Which meant that if there was a variation, because of course we would come to play and not everybody would show up, so there was a range of about three different levels uh, within this group. So there's a variation of at least three levels. Which means once you figured out the average, you were quite a lot lower than you really wanted to be compared to the person at the top end of that group. So what happens in this um, adventure? Well, as we progress, you find that the weaker individual is the one who dies again. And of course, because they die, often it would have a snowball effect and another character would die. Or, if you were really unlucky, um, almost all the party would get wiped out and one person would escape, and that wouldn't necessarily be the person who had the highest level character. And so a chain reaction occurred, and we didn't level up. We leveled down. We started, we started at about, I think it was like level six or seven, eight, around there, and we just kept dropping, slowly but surely. Um, and I thought this was a good example of following a tradition and a way of doing things that is supposed to uh, reward those who have not had their character die, but really to punish those and give a consequence for those people who had a character die. Now, you know how I feel, if you've watched my channel, you know how I feel about character death. I don't care if a character dies, but I don't care about them having to make a new character. I'm fine with them just playing the same character again. It's not an issue for me. Um, I might build something in that's story based into their character and build in a little side adventure for them, but that's just how I do things. Um, so you can see it can be a snowball effect that just makes things worse and worse and worse. Um, I've even come into groups who insist that even though everybody else is like 
12, level 12 or level 13 that you must play through all of the levels from level 1 right up to that point. So you wind up playing a level 1 character and a group full of level 12 or 13 characters. What happens? You tell me. I'll tell you what happens. The level 1 character dies, then makes a new character, which is level 1. And that character dies. And the rest of the group levels up, and the level 1 character stays level 1. It is, it is silly. It is just absolute nonsense. I am surprised that nobody's given me a thumbs down because I was expecting to be saying things that people would, found, would find um, that they wouldn't agree with or that they uh, did, you know, were appalled by. But I am all for you using milestones. I will be using them. I am sick and tired of calculating experience points and I'm not going back to it. I've had enough. Okay, I need a drink of water. Okay, Brandon, what do you got here? Um, honestly, D&D has changed so much, it's crazy. We went from gold equals experience points or experience. We had combat for, is it, we had combat for war. Now is it's combat for sport. That's right. Yeah, I know. Um, in the past, you would avoid combat. Now you 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 charge for it because you want to get into it. Um, and I think that's because they try to make every encounter sort of something you can fight. Um, I don't really agree with that. I do actually believe that there needs to be a mix right across the. Uh, a broad spectrum for combat and also that the you know the advancement of your character is based on killing monsters uh, defeating things you know because that's seems to be the easy I mean it's the easy way because experience points are loaded into the monster stat block so when you start looking at trying to award experience points for doing other things you have to get a bit more creative and you have to come up with your own ideas um, e7 lover one four how's it going Sup dude, uh, thank you very much for your Curse of Strahd videos, you are welcome. I'm still working on another one by the way, um, E7 Lover 1.4, because I just haven't done it. Um, I'm putting a lot of effort into this video, and because it's on dark gifts, uh, I was looking on the internet to see what people had done, and I was like, oh, I should do that, absolutely. should definitely cover that one. Uh, yes. Darren, you're right, Brandon has a good point. Um, I think it, it boils down to a point where adaption is key. Yeah, adapting your game is key, absolutely. Now, there's nothing wrong with using experience points if you want to do that. You know, I'm not saying that you, you have to use milestones. I just feel like it's the smart way. You know, if you're, got, if you're time constrained, then use milestones. Um... Josh, uh, Jet, yeah, that, that's common and kind of a pain. Keep in mind, a lower level will advance faster than a higher level so they can catch up. Yeah, well, that's true, provided they don't die again, um, which unfortunately tends to happen, particularly if you're playing at high level where one, one creature can wipe them out at, with one blow. Or if you drop like a, an area effect spell, which of course they're probably going to have. Um, sorry, sorry. Gracus, Gracus, really important question. How many hats do you have and what dictates your choice? I can't imagine seeing your collection. Okay, so first off, I've done a video on my hats because I got so many comments from people who were confused. Some people loved them and some people thought I was a complete moron and they did not understand. In fact, it confused them so much, some of them probably unsubscribed from my channel and as a result I made a video specifically on my hats. So I believe it's called Why do I wear hats in my videos? I think it's something like that. So if you do a little search on my uh, channel you should be able to find it. Just type in hats and it should pop up. Um, it doesn't look very pretty because it's just me trying on hats and showing you all the hats that I have and explaining why I use them. Okay, Dungeon Mo dungeon Monster. Oh, that's a nice name. Dungeon Mo Monster. Here we go. Hey, Fred. Uh, turning in late. First time actually catching anything. Well, I'm glad that you were able to catch me. Catch live. Sorry to hear about your job. Okay, don't worry about that. 
I'm probably going to wind up with another job. I just don't necessarily think I'll like it very much. I went through that a few years ago and came out on the other side, on the other other end, happier. Good luck for um, hey, you're welcome. And I, I really am trying hard to um, build a different way of doing things on my channel, but I'm also. I'm going to do the Patreon thing. I, I was talking to my brother today about how to make that work and um, I'm going to bring him onto my channel and he's going to draw some artwork and it's probably going to be for my channel and I'm going to let you guys have a look at it and it might become quite a regular thing. It just depends on his schedule. He is but busy as well. So thank you uh, Dungeon Monster. I do appreciate that. I am sorry if you have been up late and if I didn't get to your feedback in the um, chat box before you had to go to sleep, sorry about that. Okay, hi Chris, uh, which Lazy DM book should I get first? I would go with Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. The new, the, the very first one, I feel like it's got a very broad aspect to it, it, but if you have a look, now I would go with Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. That would be my choice, okay? And then after that, I would go and check out Sly Flourish's web, um, website, but also go and check out, because he's got other products as well, go and check out his YouTube channel, Sly Flourish, and go and watch some of his videos on his books, because he does advertise and talk about what is in those books. So you're not buying something and unsure what you're getting. In my case, I'm not selling a book that I've made, I'm selling somebody else's book. Um... Okay, Brandon's thanking Darren, Lord Fire Singer. I finally caught up to the, the live chat. <laughs> I can I can see the end end of the tunnel. That's good news. Um, okay, Lord, sorry, Fire Lord Singer. I used to use XP leveling until oops, oh, there's a lot of stuff coming through. We've got to go back up again. It popped away. Uh, pretty recently, my players don't like uh, not don't like not all being the same level. So. Now we use milestones, yes. See, there's another thing, you know. A lot of players don't like the idea that they're all different levels. So milestones solve a lot of those problems. It works for us. It helps, um, what's that? Avoid the avoid the murder hobos, haha. -ha. It's a little bit easier for me. Yes, it will be a little bit easier. And I, I do think that it does sort of detract from the concept of thinking, that level advancement is killing monsters. <clears throat> I just need a drink of water. I'll keep going. <clears throat> okay, Darren. Um, Chris Ditto. Uh, he just released a new Lazy Dungeon Master book. It's updated. It is the previous version was getting old. Yes, it was. Yeah, go with the new one. Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, consider it number two. I would go with number two. That's my, my personal opinion. Hello, Joe. How's it going? Uh, Reds, Fred, don't don't go pull down too far. Okay. Essa Howden. How's it going, mate? Um, hopefully, I, hopefully not a woman and I've just insulted you. <laughs> um, my characters are fourth level. They have found out that the frontier they are defending is about to be invaded by another country to, to take control. So, now it's an epic campaign with powerful magic weapons. Oh, pardon me, gas. Um, well, that's interesting. Is there... Are you just sharing this with me? Is, is there something you wanted to ask me? They will have to... have to take the lead to defend the realm. Okay, well, that's a, that's a good motivation. So how are you wanting to know how to break that up? Um, I'm not too sure. I'll keep reading read, down. We'll get there. Dungeon Monster. Uh, the flat plastic minis DM starter kit chosen by Sly Flourish is sick. Yeah, well, look. I've got a video showing you how to make your own pawns. Flat cardboard miniatures out of Magic the Gathering cards. Um, and, and it's... It's a good video, you know, it, 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 it keeps things cheap. I use 3D minis and paint them, but um, as fillers, that set has gotten me out of some pickles. Well, I believe you. 
I have pawns myself. If I couldn't carry the weight, I would go with just tokens, and I've shown people how to make tokens as well, D&D or Dungeons and Dragons tokens and pawns. So yeah. Fire Lord Singer, peace out Fred. AK, okay, I'll see you later, Fire Lord Singer. Totally understand. Um, I'm a good teacher. Okay, your videos are very informative and well done. Well, thank you. It is actually very difficult, I've discovered, um, to do live stream well. I think when I started doing the live streams, it was quite difficult, but I've gotten a lot better. <coughs> um, I can see it. I can see, I can see your comment. I know where this is going. Um, I'm going to try not to, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to respond. Here we go. Dungeon Monster Fred, no worries. From when you answered earlier, I think someone, someone of your um, experience and dedication, you should look into a Kickstarter under the 5th edition open game li license. I think you could excel. Well, see, here's the thing, um, Dungeon Monster. A lot of the stuff that I have made, I'm going to tidy up, but I'm going to release it on the Patreon. Um, so I'm, I'm not looking to do a Kickstarter, and I'm not really looking to do, because I don't have a product that I can make that I really have a passion for, um, and it requires a lot of extra time. I mean, as you know, I, I post a video or I go live so often that that takes up all of my time. Um, I can't really try to do any more. I would have to be full time and really I'm not full time. I'm looking for work and I'm doing this and I'm putting some other things in place. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't share some of the things that I have created over time with you. I just need to make them in a format or put them into a format that you will be interested in using rather than just a Word document or a PDF or something like that. Uh, Jetwell, what do you got here? Patreon idea to have um, an idea to not give you more work for it. People can submit a question for you to answer in the live stream for those who can't watch due to the time zone or work. Yes, Jetwell, that's exactly where my head's at. I would be much more likely to answer a question that a pa patron had on Patreon than somebody who's just asked me a question on YouTube. I feel like that is certainly what AJ Pickett does, and I think it's a good way of rewarding the fact that you are trying to help support somebody to continue doing what they are doing um, so that life doesn't sort of roll on and wipe them out. I've seen so many YouTube channels sort of disappear. And a lot of my favorite YouTube uh, channels have gotten so small and their subscriber um, count shrunk or not shrunk but just sort of stagnated because uh, of the way that things are developing. And there's so much competition. So yes, absolutely, um, Jetwell, you're, you're right. And I have every intentions of making that part of it. Because you're right, it would not generate any more work for me than what I would normally would do. Um, and as all of you know, quite often when people ask me to do a video, I will do it. And if I don't do the video, it's because I'm be it's beyond my skill level, or I just don't have time. Okay. Just need to have a drink of water. Okay. Um, have you heard of Lion and the Dragon OSR RPG uh, and Dark Albion? Uh, not really. No, I haven't. Uh, more of a historic medieval setting for 5th ed edition. Yeah, I still like magic in my Dungeons and Dragons, so I would tend to go with... I, I would prefer to go with something that is more about... getting away from the real world. I don't really want a game that duplicates or is realistic and duplicates all the horrible things that takes place in the real world. That's why I play Dungeons and Dragons, is to get away from all of that. And because I like fantasy. Um, Sly's got a new uh, Kickstarter going too. Yes, I believe so. I'm not going to advertise um, Sly's new Kickstarter. Um, I'm just going to advertise what he has already done that are physical products. I'm not really that keen on uh, talking about um, Kickstarters myself, usually. It's usually would be in passing. But, you know, 
check it out if you want to. Um, good night. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's time to wrap it up before I lose my voice. Right? I can see what you see what you're doing. Uh, dear. What's that, Brandon? Uh, Fred, what would you what were your thought your thoughts be about starting a party out at level five and allowing them to draw one card from the deck of many things? It's an idea I have been throwing around. Brandon, I think you should just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Um, I've thought about doing lots of different things. So I just do them. And if I regret it, then I just stop doing it and start again. Um, or I change things. And if I find that the players are so resistant to change, I just start again. Um, so I, I recommend, I mean, I've done a lot of one, one shots. Um, I've, I've done video, um, you know, I've done, not videos, I've done all sorts of things that I would not necessarily repeat again, uh, but I certainly did them for quite a long time. I did a lot of magic crafting in uh, my games when I was running a public game and to see what would happen, uh, to get some experience behind it. So always try something at least twice before you chuck it. Uh, Geom. Uh, why not just use milestones to balance the XP whenever the party has a, a big XP level difference? Well, yeah, why not? You could. I think a small difference in XP isn't bad and should incentivize being more active and, and interactive in the team. See, see, here's the thing. I haven't actually seen people become less engaged in a game because they were using milestones. I've never actually seen people become more active by using experience points. And there's nothing wrong with doing what you're suggesting. But I've never actually seen it, res it have a payoff. Um, all the things that people talk about like, yes, but by awarding experience points a particular way um, to individuals, it encourages, encourages them to do something. Really? I've never seen it in my game. If you've seen it in your game, then obviously my experience has been different. I've never really seen it in other people's games when they've dungeon mastered. I've never seen it when anybody in my home group has dungeon mastered. It hasn't changed anything. Uh, if we like playing the game, we keep playing the game. And if we get more involved, we get more involved. It really comes down to, you know, how things are working in the group and the type of adventure it is and who's DMing. That's really all, it's, all it comes down to. That's been my experience. Okay. And I've done a lot of public games as well. And it's been the same way there. Um, okay, Brandon. I want something to mix things up at the start of the campaign. Yeah. Well, blow something up. Sounds terrible. But yeah, when you're unsure of what to do, how to mix something up and start your campaign, I would uh, I would present the, the main villain in their full-blown glory. Uh, just to scare the bejesus out of them. Why not? Um, I've, uh, I've thrown a Tarask at level 1 characters, which sounds terrible. But, you know, the the end result is those level 1 characters didn't actually have to fight the Tarask to defeat the Tarask. And I, I did other things as well that are probably considered inappropriate by a lot of other dungeon masters. But honestly... Try everything at least twice, and when it doesn't work on a consistent basis, then you know you're on to something, <laughs> okay? Um, as far as the campaign I was going to do, uh, in Milestones, making allies, uh, taking out middle command, then the big baddies, what do you think about characters dealing with gods getting involved, both good and bad? Okay, so... I ran uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, followed by Rise of Tiamat, and I would really like to do a Dungeon Master Guide on the Rise of Tiamat. I really don't like the Horde, um, Horde of the Dragon Queen. And after that, we got to about level 15. And from level 15 to level 20, we started dealing with gods. We were starting to deal with um, demigods, and you absolutely should. Um, I don't think that's an issue. Go for it. It certainly involve gods, bad and good, uh, even at low level. They don't need to be. A f they don't have to be set up as a fight. They can be set up as something else because a god is going to roll over them, right? 
Okay, drink of water again. I am trying to keep up with the live chat, don't you worry. Okay, was really um, excited when you commented on one of my silly videos. Ah, I think you're one of the most comprehensive and enjoyable D&D content on YouTube. Well, that's because I'm a normal person and normal people who play Dungeons and Dragons don't have just one particular avenue that they think will work on YouTube to make money. Uh, which is why I do lots of different things because I'm interested in the whole thing. You know, being a player and a dungeon master, I'm interested in the rules. Yes, um, I'm more interested in making sure other people understand the rules so they don't feel like they can't play the game. That's my key motivation. But thank you very much. And um, yes, I like silly videos. I, I have every intention of doing a lot more silly videos myself. I just haven't got around to it. Got to get myself in the mood. Um, and I believe my brother will certainly help me get there. Uh, and so would my sister. I just haven't seen her for a while. Okay, Big Kid. Hi, how's it going, Big Kid? Um, I do a game with eight players. Ooh, family, awesome. That is so good. When, when people play with their family, that is just like the best. It's even better than friends. I think it's wonderful. And I was uh, doing XP leveling as we went through the Lost Mine of Fandalva. But I switched to Milestones before Wave Echo Cave. I use stats on ma uh, mobs and hashtag something, but Milestones still better. Yeah, I do feel like Milestones are the way. You just need to communicate to people, you know, roughly what you're looking for. You don't have to tell them that you have to do this because you, you're going to wind up giving away the story, right? But you can give them a rough idea of how you milestone and what you're looking for to, to level up. Um, Dungeon Monster, I would do the same, but I work a ton of overtime. Yeah, absolutely. And I play D&D. Uh, making videos is totally not a priority to me. Ha ha. Too busy, but I enjoy it. Yeah, which, look, is part of the reason why I do, I do this um, Dungeon Monster the way I do it is because I am in the same boat, you know. I don't do a lot of overtime right now because I'm unemployed. But, you know, I still had a lot of other things I had to contend with. Um, but, live stream's good. The reason being is as long as the setup isn't too complicated and you understand how to live stream and I set everything up and just leave it set up and then just walk away and I can come back. Um, I might do a bit of research on a topic that I want to do. I do it and then once I've done it, there's a whole... look. Not, not the entire channel that watches my, my stuff likes the live stream content. They wait till I cut it down into a shorter ver um, uh, version and they watch that. So every video has usually got two versions. The live content with all of the Q&A after and another version which is just the presentation and nothing else. And it works well. I feel like it has reduced my workload and made it easier for me to present stuff on on YouTube that I enjoy doing. Uh, Dungeon Monster. Big kid, aren't we all? We're all big kids if we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. How do you manage an eight player game? Uh, that I'd be tough, that'd be tough, good on you for being able to control that. Um, the thing with a, a large table, which I've done before, I've done up to 13. I don't recommend it, it's not a lot of fun and you'll be exhausted, is uh, having having the players take on a lot of different tasks. I need to do a video on this topic, don't I? I've done one on small groups, so I haven't done one on big groups. Um, and I would highly recommend using my group initiative, because often when it comes to combat, that's when things really get uh, unwieldy and difficult. Uh, teaching people how to roll um, attack and damage at the same time. Making sure they have, you know, if they get up in the levels, making sure they have uh, color-coded their dice for their attacks so that it's easy for them to calculate. Um, I use uh, average damage for monsters, uh, which I'll talk about later in some other video. Um, so I do a lot of, I take a lot of shortcuts. I take a lot of shortcuts to make it easier for me. Uh, but group initiative is one of the best things I ever did. Um, I get everybody to roll initiative before we even start the game. Um, and often I'll have more than one initiative count for them. So I don't have to sort of wait for them to roll dice. Um, I have a video on my group initiative um, 
method, which I recommend going and checking out if you haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, here we go. Um, what do you think of using a creative system for magic uh, le uh, le left up to the player wizard's imagination? Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, then making a difficulty DC check to cast spells. Uh -huh. Limit spells per level 1, 2, 3, 4. Feels like an awful lot of extra work. Um, if you want to do it, go for it. I'm not really, I don't really try to do things that create more work for me. Um, I try to spend my time on the things I think my players will like. So by creating an interesting location, an interesting character, interesting monsters is one of my key focuses. Uh, interesting and unusual magic items, um, which usually means they're probably cursed. Uh, <laughs> doing weird things that people will remember and talk about. They might not like it, but I want them to talk about it. I want that to be the focus for them. Um, and I have unfortunately developed a reputation by doing that sort of stuff. Uh, okay. Oscar. Hi Fred. I'm giving XP for killing foes and roleplay and making good... Uh, what's that? Decisions and running the Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah, I feel like the Tomb of Annihilation is a tricky one because it's a big, huge sandbox. So very hard to sort of work out how to figure that out, right? Um, but yeah, do it the way you want to. I'm just providing you with an option. You decide. It, to be honest, I play. I used XP, you know, calculated XP for years before I ever decided it was time to use milestones. Brandon, um, love you, Fred. I never considered throwing a Tarask at... Level 1 characters. Man, it was a very popular table too. They all loved the idea. Um, it's uh, appalling, but then uh, it, it wasn't a big deal. In the end, the Tarrasque went back to sleep and didn't uh, continue destroying the, uh, the countryside. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Tasty Basie. Tasty Basie? Hello, Tasty Basie. <laughs> um, love the name lost mine of tips I'm about to run the town of Phandalin as a never been a never been a player GM okay alright so you've never been a player GM so you've never been a, a game master and look don't try to present everything in Phandalin all at once I've done a couple of videos on um, well quite a few videos on the lost mine of Phandalin but I have a series if you haven't watched them Lost Mine of Fandelva, absolutely truckloads of videos on that particular topic. I've started doing videos on Fandolin and the NPCs in that location. Uh, only present them with three. Mate, don't whatever you're doing, don't don't throw too many NPCs at them. You can you can throw the other NPCs at the players' characters later. Um, and uh, yeah, try to do something to relax before you run the game. Something that helps you sort of calm down. Uh, Jetwell, what could you run prior to uh, Rise of Tiamat as um, Horde of the Dragon Queen is bad? It's a good question. Do you know what I would suggest? Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Don't run anything before it. Just start them at level 10 and go from there. <laughs> Why not? Just say, look, um, what's been happening across the countryside has been, you know, a, a quick summary of the Horde of the Dragon Queen. Somebody else has done all of this, but you have been brought on to do the Rise of Tiamat. Uh, and the council has called you in and just do it that way. Which, just given me an idea, which means I don't actually have to worry about doing a Horde of the Dragon Queen Dungeon Master Guide before doing a Rise of Tiamat Dungeon Master Guide, if I ever get the time. Who knows if I will. But that does um, change my way of thinking right there and then. That means that it's more likely to happen than it was before. I really like that. That's good. Yes, just run the Rise of Tiamat and forget about running anything. Why not? You can start level 10. Uh, look, the only problem is going to be is if you're dealing with people who have never played the game and they're starting for the first time. Um, what's another way? What's another adventure you could run before... The Rise of Tiamat. You could just run the Lost Mine of Fandelva and then use some of the Tales of the Yawning Portal adventures 
to fill in from level 5 to 10 and then go straight into the Rise of Tiamat. Um, why not? Do it that way. I think it's a great idea. But then again, I often think my ideas are great ideas. <laughs> uh, okay, hopefully that answered your question, Jetwell. Uh, Tasty, Tasty Basie, also, is that an Alice in Wonderland shower curtain? No, it is not an Alice in Wonderland shower curtain, but I will get out of the way so you can see what it is. It is Alice in Wonderland. It is a, <laughs> I've chucked my duvet cover that has Alice in Wonderland on it over my whiteboard, which I don't use very often nowadays because I, it just felt weird. Um, and and so th therefore my background, because I like Alice in Wonderland, um, I thought that was a good way of uh, sort of compromising, having a back, because behind me is just like a, a solid blank wall. It would be boring, right? And the sound bounces. But the, the, the duvet cover stops the sound from bouncing in my uh, office, which is like a little cubicle really, uh, too much. Um, and I should hopefully be getting some acoustic foam um, before I run out of money, I'm going to buy some acoustic foam, sort out my desk with stuff, and uh, yes. So I, if you like that background, awesome. It is a great duvet cover. I had one with a uh, tiger on it as well. Um, I haven't put that up because I kind of like Alice in Wonderland as my background. I can't help myself. <sighs> okay, where are we? Um... Uh, oh, oops. Fred, do you drink beer? I used to, I can't anymore. Um, things with sugar in it uh, cause me problems and I, I easily develop gas. You might have noticed I burped a couple of times. That is a product of having an irritable bowel. Uh, I have a lot of dietary problems, you might say. Oh gosh, I can hear it now. Big Kid, uh, Dungeon Master, it's tough and I'm a first time DM. This and the other channels help. I think learning law helps. Yes. Look, don't worry about doing it right. Um, big kid, I, I just run the game and just try to have fun. I want you to have fun. If you have fun, the chances are the players are having fun as well. And your, your job is just to put on a, a good show. I, I, I kind of consider uh, a dungeon master, not a game master, but more like a showman or a show person, or a show woman, you are like the ringmaster, uh, and you're putting on the show, here it is, and you unfold it like a magician, um, and, and you don't have to worry about doing that with voices and a particular way, you don't even have to worry about doing it well, as long as you do it, you will eventually get better at it, and you won't even think about it, and, you know, once a bit of time passes, you'll think, ah, uh, it was hard back then, but now I don't even worry about those sorts of things. Do you know the difference between a new dungeon master and an experienced dungeon master? It's quite often that the experienced dungeon master couldn't give a rat's butt about what's going on. That's it. It's confidence and just they just don't care. Often uh, one of the, the telling points between an experienced dungeon master and a new dungeon master. So, just do the best you can. Um, how would you run Milestones in the Lost Mine of Fandelver? Well, very, very simple. First chapter. Ah, here's the problem. Yes, I see what you're talking about. Because you have, you have that third chapter. That third chapter causes a whole lot of problems, doesn't it? I totally see where you're coming from. I have to think about that. That is a... You have just created another video for me. For the Lost Mon of Fandelva. Jet well, well done. So, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can see... Yeah, there are problems with it. Uh, it will require, it's going to require me to have a bit of a think about that topic. I'll get back to it though. I'm almost out of water though. I've been going for almost an hour. So I'm going to get through the, the chat as quickly as I can. Remember, I'm going to be back tomorrow, so it's not like you won't get an opportunity to chat with me. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm back tomorrow. I think I am. Yeah, 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, Dungeon Monster, big kid, right on, brother. That's the awesome man. I hope your campaign continues going well. I certainly hope your campaign goes well as well. As, exactly. I want everybody to be successful. I want Dungeons and Dragons to be popular rather than a niche um, activity. Mainstream sounds bad, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I want you to be able to go into any uh, game store um, or toy store and be able to buy Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, hello. I can see ducks through the window. Go away. Go away, duck. Go away! Oh, jeez. All right. Duck for dinner. That's what we need is duck. I'm going to call the council. Um, anyway, I've got ducks flying around. It's a... We're in a rural area, but it's a town. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. Um, Dungeon Monster. Fred, what's your thoughts on alcohol at the table? I think alcohol at the table is a good thing. Absolutely. You should definitely have alcohol. Um, provided they're not too young. If they're too young, then no. no. Uh, when my group started, we, we were all under 18 during 3, <laughs> 3E. At that this point, we are all of age. Uh, sometimes I think uh, continue in next message. Mm. Look, Dungeon Mon uh, Monster, here's the thing. Um, I would often drink uh, when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was an adult. Uh, and if I still could, I would. Uh, provided I don't have to drive home and wind up being a risk to myself and other people. So absolutely. We used to drink um, honey meat uh, and occasionally uh, a quality wine or um, a really expensive or unusual ale. So we didn't really drink like normal stuff, but you can. Um, but yes, I found that at least a couple of beers or one glass of wine in somebody usually makes a much more relaxed person and a much better game and certainly a much more relaxed uh, dungeon master. So yes, if you are of age to drink, and you don't have to worry about driving home, and you're not going to wind up endangering yourself or other people, yep, just don't drink too much. Uh, okay, Dungeon Monster. It can enhance the RPG. I think it can, yeah. But other times I think it uh, curtails things. I'm also um, guilty as DM of indulging during some sessions. I don't think that's actually a bad thing. Look, the only time it's a bad to do that is when your your mind and your mood is not in the right place because whatever you wherever you are when you drink will uh, make that bigger so if you're down in the dumps and you drink you're just going to get more down in the dumps if you're angry and you drink you're probably just going to get more angry so you need to you need to pick the right time uh, what else we got here Tasty Basie. Thanks, Fred. You are welcome. I've been watching your videos as my group gets uh, through the Lost Mine of Fandalva slowly. Uh, super helpful. Your tips, tips have made it so we don't get bogged down in rules or story hooks. Good. Tasty Basie. Point your players to my game rule videos so you don't have to explain stuff to them for the umpteenth time or even once. Just say, look, this is where I want you to go to find out because I have a, a video playlist. Those are pretty short videos. I think there's about 52, 54 on all the basics of playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Get them to watch those things because that'll that, 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 that there's a reason why I made those videos a particular way. They were short. They were to the point. They were quick. You can't hear me breathing because I cut all of that out. And um, essentially it gets right to the crux of it. And so therefore, they should get the information fairly quickly and answer a lot of stuff that you don't have to deal with. Um, when you create an RPG world, what is your go-to fantasy government? Do you prefer a feudal system or an empire or a city-state uh, ruled by aristocrats? Uh, I tend to go with a number of different nations and locations that are just wild that aren't under control. I like my fantasy worlds to have little pockets of uh, uh, 
normal, you know, there'll be empires, there'll be little nations, there'll be little communities and so forth. But I don't want the whole world all planned out. I want some places that are wild and unmanaged where people don't go because it's too dangerous because the orcs orcs control that location or there's just too many other things going on there that they can't possibly deal with. So yeah, when it comes to creating a fantasy world, I prefer to have little points of control. I don't really want my world to be controlled by humans, elves, dwarves and anything else. Um, I want them to be trying to fight it out uh, in a rough and difficult place. That's me. Uh, Tasty Basie, uh, I dig it. Great duvet cover. It is, it is, it's which why I kept it. Um, I'm thinking of putting some other things up behind me as well. Um, I just haven't decided what. I want something really cool. Um, and uh, make something cooler than Alice in Wonderland is going to be difficult, but we'll, we'll find something. Oscar, I'm my, uh, in, I'm my way of rewarding XP. Okay. All player characters would receive same amount of XP in, in the case of role playing and taking good decision. What is that duck doing? He's pulling his feathers out. I, th I think he's pooping over the um, edge of my veranda. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I like the uh, window so I can see outside, but uh, right now that duck is driving me nuts. Uh, I need duck for dinner. Okay, sorry, back to the question that Oscar was talking about, or what he was commenting on, his feedback really. Uh, same amount of XP in case of role playing, taking good decisions, oh, making de good decisions, taking good decisions. When players do something, um, and do some good stuff, okay. Um, helping and so on. Yeah, that's that's how I used to do it. I just, I just don't do it now. I just, you know, I, I prefer a different system. Okay, I reward players and players characters. Yeah, there, there, you absolutely should have rewards for players and player uh, and the characters, the player's character. You, you don't have to have it just be for the player's character and not for the player. Um, one of the things I do in terms of rewarding my players is if they've been playing at my table for a long time, on their birthday I'll buy them a gift or um, I'll... I'll make something for them or I, I usually give them something that I think they will find useful for playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I might make something and give it to them. Um, but yeah, often that's how I reward my players for being at my table and making my life easier and having a good time. Jetwell, um, hey thanks for all of the help Fred, can't wait for the more, more videos, so you're welcome. No problems, big kid. Uh, when we finish Lost Mine of Found Delver, we, we, we are going to transition to Horde of the Dragon Queen, but I am going to try my own story for two levels and weave into Hunting Lodge at level seven. Would you, would love any tips? I think your approach, big kid, is very sensible. I think absolutely do something like that. Yeah. Ditch a whole chunk of Horde of the Dragon Queen and just go in at a much higher level. Um, level 7 pretty much means you're just about finished. And to be honest, the only level, only chapters that I thought stood out was clearly the last chapter, and you know why. Um, and the very first chapter and the second chapter. But that's it. So, um, and all the rest of the middle was just like, boring. I didn't like it. My players loved it, um, but I didn't. It, didn't, it wasn't fun for me. Uh, big kid, uh, da, 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 da. and I think your approach is very sensible. But yeah, at level seven, you'll find you're pretty much finishing up Horde of the Dragon Queen at level eight. If you, and then chances are you won't even get to level eight. Sometimes groups used to play through Horde of the Dragon Queen from level one and be finished by level five or six. Uh, two, Ted Nasmith uh, has some great fantasy art for your background. Okay, all right. Thank you. I um, I will consider it. I, I was looking at a green screen and I've decided that no, I won't. I was talking to my brother and he said there's a lot of gear involved. 
um, that you will take up space. So we've decided to go with uh, something else. Um, I've, I've got a source for it, so we'll go from there. But maybe I'll have a look at Ted uh, Nasmith. N- Nasmith. N- Naismith? Naismith. Okay. Oscar, thanks a lot, Fred. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Dungeon Monster, thanks very much for the stream and answering uh, me tonight. No problems. All the best. I wish you the very best in finding work. If you're like me, you'll end up in a much better place moving forward. Keep up the great work. I will certainly try to do that. Okay, so I am I am so tired now, and I've lost my voice. It's it's I can feel it straining. So now that I'm exhausted, and definitely ready to do something else, I am going to say what I normally say, and you know what it is. You know what it is. Have a good night, have a good day, have a good afternoon, have a good morning, wherever you are in the world, and look after your family and your friends, and make sure to look after yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.